Welcome to the TMC Newsroom. My name is Rich Tarani. Thanks for watching us today. This week we are in Boston, Massachusetts. We're meeting with a number of the companies in the area trying to uh, get a sense of uh, what's happening in the communications and technology markets. And on our program is Dan Nordale. He is the VP of Enterprise Marketing at Nuance. And Dan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Rich. Thanks very much. So, uh, I'm certainly familiar with your company going back um, decades, and uh, if it's been 20 years, at least a decade and a half, uh, seems at least 20 years. But uh, how long? When was the company founded? It's been a long, uh, long time. Probably of course, there's a long, long <laughs> history coming out of Xerox Park way back. So uh, years and years, yeah, yeah, decades in the and 70s. decades. So, uh, and more recently, a lot of people are probably familiar with the fact that um, your technologies are powering some some Apple solutions and. Uh, of course, many people are now using uh, products like Siri to um, learn about the wonders of speech recognition. And I was hoping we could start off just talking about how the consumerization of IT is, as we keep hearing about in all these other trends, is affecting uh, speech recognition. Um, definitely products like Siri, as they come to market, as consumers become more familiar with the value or the, the usefulness of a speech inter interface or certainly a flexible way to interact with applications and then natural language which is really provides this tremendous collapsing of navigation as they become more aware of that as they understand the value that has a tremendous impact on our positive impact on our business so we see that right across whether we're providing solutions for for mobile applications providing solutions for people to use on their websites or in the traditional voice channel, sort of right across those, people more intuitively understand the, the potential for speech and the usefulness to them of speech and natural language. Now, the good news is also for enterprises, and obviously as you do better in your business, it's because they're buying more, they now can more comfortably roll out speech applications to their customers because there is a higher level of comfort with speech in the consumer devices that the consum that, that are being purchased. So it's just this one-two punch where you're kind of allowing this technology to permeate the enterprise, which is going to obviously um, increase productivity of contact centers, increase uh, potential potentially customer satisfaction, assuming that it's done properly and set up properly and, and things like that, right? That's exactly right. The um, we just I was just having a conversation with uh, a customer this week, and we were talking about that very same fact. Is is the fact that uh, he's become a huge consumer user of speech on his uh, smart device. He now more intuitively understands the benefit to consumers, and as you rightly said, he. he uh, understands that consumers are much further along in, in terms of adoption of speech, therefore rolling out solutions with speech, uh, just, you know, the adoption's much quicker and they see the return uh, al almost immediately in terms of uh, brand loyalty but then also um, efficiency gains. Now it's also fascinating that you've got uh, three big players in the tech space. Uh, we had Microsoft first with the Tell Me acquisition but they were doing speech even before the Tell Me acquisition, as I recall. You've got Google, who has been using speech in their applications for a number of years. And, and now we've got Apple, who's also warmed up to, to speech. So we've got three big, big players that are pushing the market along, which again is good, right? That's right. It, it provides tremendous, uh, you know, it's a rising tide, which lifts, fortunately, lifts all of us in the market. I think we'll also see a lot of expansion of speech into other consumer devices. So we've seen a lot of traction recently in the living room and use of speech and, and um, uh, powering that experience of uh, more easily using the many devices that people have uh, in their living room. So. So again, just further adoption, further spread uh, of the technology helps us in, in all of our businesses uh, across the many lines of business Nuance has, but certainly within the care space, ter tremendous benefit for us. It's one, this, this uh, acceptance of speech is one of the three big pillars that we believe, the macro trends that are, that are fueling our business. So one is just the general proliferation of smart devices 
so as more and more uh, as the coverage goes towards 100% uh, and actually over 100% as, as we'll see, um, the connectedness, the, the, the transformation of, of, a cons of the consumer due to the power of those devices and due to the, pa you know, the power of the connectivity and the power of the computing power on that device is remarkable. You layer on that this adoption or you know, people getting comfortable with a much more efficient way to use a uh, much more efficient interface between them and technology, which is uh, speech natural language. And then the third sort of prong is uh, the tremendous adoption by consumers of self-service technology. So we see right across, not right. only in our industry, but right across many industries, consumers uh, having a, a tremendous affinity for self-service technologies. We, we had a customer summit a couple weeks ago, and one of the great quotes from uh, customer, Vice President of Customer Care from an extremely large airline said, as an industry, we've introduced self-service technologies really to serve the enterprise, to drive costs out of serving consumers. That, that's true of IVRs, that's true of ATMs, that's true of uh, you know, self-checkout in, in uh, retail settings. But actually what they've seen is consumers are turning the table on enterprises. And in fact, the demand for self-service, competent self-service, which does more than it does today, is outstripping the ability for enterprises to roll those services out. So it's those sort of combined, everyone has a smart device. They're getting far more comfortable with speech and natural language as a way, as a powerful way to use that. And they just generally have a much stronger affinity for automation. All of those, again, are, are these you know, positive macro sure. trends feeling our business. Also, if you think about the kids born in the 80s and the 90s, right, now that exactly. they're entering um, adulthood and, and beyond, that they are, um, a product of the information age and so their comfort level with I, I think the word I can't remember the word you said but intelligent solutions or, or solutions so, um, customer care solutions that are that are um, quality or well thought out those those are the kinds of things that they want as a consumer myself That's and right. yourself I mean if it's done well I don't want to speak to a human if it's not done well then of course uh, you need you need that human touch. That's right and that uh, the the potential for rolling automation on a smart device is so much higher. You can provide such a uh, more rich experience. And so those Gen Y consumers have grown up a big chunk of their life. They've adapted to that that's the standard. And so their expectations for how good an experience can be, how powerful it can be, how immediate it can be, is all driven off applications on a smart device. And so absolutely they have a tremendously you know they're they're even even higher affinity for automation than the rest of the population we just did some research on this and we found 82 percent of gen y consumers which fall in exactly its age range um, prefer self-service to speaking to someone and when you dive into that why do they prefer it the number one reason is to avoid waiting or to potentially avoid the potential outcome of being transferred within the contact center. So they're avoiding these negative outcomes that they know are a potential if they jump into the contact center. They're staying in automation and they're pushing enterprises to provide more, more capabilities. So as we're talking, I'm just thinking of this magical application whereby uh, when I call a company to either purchase something from my smartphone or I call them from uh, call them for a service issue or whatever that they would text me back instantaneously uh, a tiny URL that I could click on in the text message and open up a personalized web page assuming that the phone number is linked to my account allowing me as I wait on the phone to do some self-service things myself or even have my account up up on the screen because I know with my credit card company quite often uh, I'll get a call about a potentially fraudulent transaction. It'll ask me all sorts of questions, and I actually go to the web portal to kind of get a sense of what it is because um, I, I charge a lot of things. So just to see, oh, oh yeah, I did buy that, and you know, I, I, I want to know, you know, they want to know is this a, 
a correct transaction or not a correct transaction. Right. But I'm, I'm wondering if that's not where things are going to go with smartphones and the ability to use HTML5 and text messaging and all that stuff can come together and make the customer experience much better. Much more immediate, much more powerful, and, and that's exactly where, where consumers want it to go. So we're introducing a product uh, later this month called Prodigy, and it's actually a family of, of products. The first solution is called Prodigy FAQ. So Prodigy FAQ can be used on a mobile device, can be used on a website. And, and it's exactly as you'd articulated the experience. So as you're in your mobile device, you have a question. You ask, you ask the question, and we, using natural language uh, technology and the ability to dive deep into documents, so deep QA capability, you combine those capabilities with advanced dialogue capability, conversational understanding, so the ability to uh, go back to the user with a, with a follow-on question to, e to understand complete meaning or to gather additional information in order to provide the right answer. So once you, we have that meaning, once we have the data we need, diving into the particular documents, right into the particular artifact that can provide the answer, the immediate answer. Now you said deep QA, is that qualitative analysis? I wasn't sure what the QA stood for. A question and answer. Ah, so okay. it's ability to, to query uh, a system and for it to provide a really precise, exact answer back, which is there's a premium on the mobile device for precision. So getting a stack of links back on a mobile device proves to be a pretty unusable, uh, uh, unhelpful user experience. On the freeway so, especially. <laughs> exactly. You're not using your phone <laughs> on the freeway, are you? Just generically, <laughs> I thought it was worth pointing Just out. Just saying. <laughs> uh, so that ability to provide a very natural uh, front-end interface, the ability to converse, to understand meaning and, and fill out and gather information and come back with pre precise answer, we believe is a winning formula is, is for a experience. Consumer? It, it's ultimately a consumer facing technology that we'll provide to we provide to enterprises that they can they can roll into their again applications on the smart device or applications on the website. Fascinating. Okay, that has a lot of potential. I mean because there are arguments right now about whether Siri is a competitor to Google, and Eric Schmidt has told the, uh, our government in, in antitrust hearings or, or similar such hearings that, that Siri is a potential major threat to Google's ability to be a dominant search provider, and whether or not you believe that, it's another story. But if you do believe it, then any other solution which gives you an immediate query or immediate response to a query mm -hmm. could be considered in that kind of uh, realm of a competitor to search engines? It can. To be honest with you, we believe that when consumers come to an application, there's two potential outcomes that they're after. One is, a, is an informational outcome. That's in this query vein where they're looking for answers, which is in a buying cycle or in a service cycle. Sometimes it's just information that they want, or at least they want to start with information. The other outcomes people are looking for are transactional outcomes. So this capability to take in a natural language input, be that text or spoken, the ability to converse, to fully understand meaning and, and collect data, uh, that capability uh, becomes extremely uh, important to do either return an informational query return, an answer, or to provide a transactional outcome. So in that way, it, it's, it's, it, it's slightly larger than search because, again, people uh, you know, often are looking to transact, particularly sure. in enterprise mobile applications or web applications. But it's a similar capability. It, yeah, it's similar. It's very exciting because, I mean, Samsung's got a dual-core 1.5 gigahertz chip in its latest phone, which I can't remember because it's like three or four words together with the number two, Galaxy 2. S maybe I, I should, turbo I should know all the Galaxy names and, uh, two uh, yeah. S something something right. I can't remember but I wrote about it recently and I was just blown away at just the amount of uh, horsepower 
And there's a quad-core tablet out now, too, which means a quad-core smartphone exactly. is going to be in our pockets probably within a year. Moore's Law tells us, what, 18 months? Something like that? And you combine that with the power of many of these solutions are tapping into network uh, capabilities right. as well. And 4G and networks will be prevalent in a couple of years. So you've got 4G networks. You've got these quad-core 1.5 gig processors. Um, fertility rate's going to plummet, but that's another <laughs> issue. And you could just do some amazing things. Yeah. It's the power that a consumer has right in their hands, connected all the time, is really, it makes us feel old, but it's sort of, uh, it's pretty amazing, right? So again, if we were Gen Y, we'd think it's just normal. But exactly. It does seem, it's pretty awesome. Exactly. Well, I remember using a, a calculator back in the day before there were actually computers. I mean, not quite the abacus. <laughs> but but still, I remember the punch cards on mainframe. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of of that generation. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go back that far to punch <laughs> cards, but <laughs> close. <laughs> well, I, look, I appreciate you being on the program. This was great. Is there anything else we we haven't touched on, like what's next, or do did we cover that with uh, the announcement you made? You know, the Prodigy technology is really uh, one of the most exciting things. I think everybody in the company is really thrilled. Uh, the the utility is amazing. We didn't talk a lot about. Uh, nuances, you know, huge release of our advantage portfolio, but which really is how does nuance help enterprises deliver super quality experience on their through their mobile applications? So how does how do organizations produce a Siri like or near Siri like experience? And that's another huge area for the company, which is probably more intuitive uh, that we'd be playing there. But you combine that ability to collapse navigation, combine that with Prodigy, this ability to get a precise answer. And we think the future is extremely bright. That and the, the social company, which, I mean, as, as we move towards repositories of information that are, let's say, taken out of email or at least um, amplified within the social network, and they could also live in email. But I think that we're going to see more searchable repositories available to these kinds of systems. And so being able to query information regarding a project that was launched two or three years ago and being able to determine back in, let's say, 2009, 2008, you know, give, me the, give me the reason we started this project and doing that via, via some kind of mobile device and seeing a quick answer or having it read to you. What's the reason we started this project in 2008? Bang. As opposed to right now, where that might live in, who knows where it lives? It might live on someone's uh, someone's desktop. It, uh, it it lives in such an obscure, unattainable place so often that people don't even pursue the answer. Right. And so right. these are it's a hugely transformative time. Very it's exciting. Very time. exciting. Really, I mean, you you bring it all together and keep up the good work, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing these future advancements and uh, some of the technologies you outlined uh, here on the program. Fantastic. I appreciate the opportunity. Have a great Thanks. day.